The concept of the samurai, their iconic swords and their fanatical devotion to honour has enraptured Western cinema audiences for nearly a century. Like tales of European knights, stories of the samurai repeatedly find their way into Western media. In particular, the samurai code known as Bushido has become almost universally known in the West, where it has been both revered and reviled. On the one hand, it has been regarded with fascination, admiration and awe as the virtuous relic of a noble past. On the other hand, it has been blamed for the rise of Japan's nationalism and imperialism in the 20th century and the atrocities of Japanese war crimes. However, generally speaking, Bushido continues to be idolised in the West, where it has been applied to a wide range of fields, from self-improvement to business leadership skills. The powerful attraction of Bushido to Western audiences lies in its curious combination of exotic foreignness and nostalgic familiarity. In particular, it evokes the memory of European chivalry, the closest Western equivalent to Bushido. This is a particularly relevant comparison for two reasons. Firstly, because historical European chivalry is just as misunderstood as Bushido, and secondly, because like the popular conceptions of European chivalry, Bushido is almost completely an invention of the 19th century. In a groundbreaking PhD thesis in 2011, Oleg Benesh produced overwhelming evidence against the view that, quote, Bushido was a centuries-old code of behaviour rooted in the historical samurai class and transmitted into the modern period, end quote. Instead, Benesh demonstrated, quote, The concept of Bushido was largely unknown before the last decade of the 19th century and was widely disseminated only after 1900, end quote. To explain how all this came about, this video will address Bushido's pre-modern history, its reinvention in the 19th century, and the new Bushido's impact on 20th century Japan. Bushido's pre-modern history Miyamoto Musashi is possibly the most famous samurai who ever lived. He was a formidable swordsman, as well as an accomplished poet, painter and sculptor. In modern depictions, he is typically portrayed as a model samurai and the very embodiment of Bushido. Yet his actual life was incompatible with Bushido as it is commonly understood today. At various times in his life he was a mercenary, fled from the battlefield instead of sacrificing himself for his lord or committing ritual suicide to preserve his honour, and made surprise attacks on his enemies in order to gain a tactical advantage. All this may seem very far from the modern understanding of Bushido, but it was entirely acceptable for historical samurai. In his 2011 thesis, Benesh explains that historical source material and extant scholarship demonstrates there is no evidence for, quote, a single, broadly accepted, bushy-specific ethical system at any point in pre-modern Japanese history, end quote. Benesh cites Professor Yamamoto Hirafumi of the University of Tokyo, arguing that, in Benesh's words, quote, there were no written works which large numbers of samurai could have used to understand the way of the warrior, End quote. Bushido, as a warrior code, simply did not exist. In fact, Banesh also says, quote, The term Bushido has not been found in any medieval texts, and the consensus among historians is that no comparable concepts existed at the time under any name. End quote. Consequently, Banesh writes, quote, Current historians of medieval Japan do not consider Bushido a useful exegetical tool and it is rarely found in their scholarship." End quote. Bushido reinvented in the 19th century By the mid-19th century, Japanese leaders were greatly alarmed by the realisation that they were so technologically behind the Western powers. Professor Toshio Watanabe explains that from 1868 to 1912, during the period known as the Meiji Restoration, quote, Japan decided to industrialise on the model of Western capitalism in order to catch up with the advanced countries in the West. End quote. However, Watanabe observes, ideologically, Japan turned to its own past for inspiration, basing the spirit of the new age on quote, values that emphasised spiritualism or even nationalism. End quote. 
This need for a unique Japanese code of spiritual and ethical values led to the modern invention of Bushido. Professor Leo Browdy of the University of Southern California explains that Bushido was promoted as, quote, a tonic that could restore health to civilized society, end quote. The historical fiction of a centuries-old Bushido code was almost entirely the product of two very different men, a Japanese Christian named Nitobe Inazo and an anti-Christian Japanese philosopher named Inoue Tetsujiro. Nitobe's work, originally published in English, convinced generations of Western scholars, while Inoue's writings, which sold millions of copies in Japan, became the foundation of a nationalist cult of militarization and imperialism. As a result of at least a decade spent studying and traveling overseas, Nitobe Inazo became increasingly concerned that Japan was obviously technologically and economically less developed than the Western powers. In response, Nitobe devoted himself to demonstrating that Japan was nevertheless the historical, cultural, ethical and spiritual equal of the West. Inspired by both medieval European chivalry and Christianity, Nitobe's book Bushido, The Soul of Japan, first published in 1899 in English, attempted to show that Japan had its own unique warrior code of equal value. He called this code Bushido. Benesh says Nitobe was so unaware of both the real history of the samurai and of Japanese scholarly commentary that he actually believed he had invented this word, though it was already being used by some Japanese historians. Well aware that his attempts to systematize a warrior code for which there was virtually no textual evidence, Nitobe explained that the absence of sources was due to the fact that Bushido was transmitted orally, writing, quote, It is not a written code. At best, it consists of a few maxims handed down from mouth to mouth, or coming from the pen of some well-known warrior or savant, end quote. Benesh says that Nitobe was widely influential outside Japan, but was criticized scathingly by his Japanese peers, such as Tsuratsu Kishi, Inue Tetsujiro, and Uemura Masahisa. Benesh also writes that at least one British reviewer, quote, dismissed Nitobe's theories as fabrications without any historical validity, cobbled together through partial statement and wholesale suppression. Nevertheless, Nitobe's work was immensely influential on many Western scholars. Dr. Robert H. Scharf of the University of California, Berkeley, says, quote, a generation of unsuspecting Europeans and Americans was subjected to Meiji caricatures of the lofty spirituality, the selflessness, and the refined aesthetic sensibilities of the Japanese race. End quote. Nitobe's legacy in the West was a completely romanticized view of a Bushido which never existed historically, a view which persisted until well after the Second World War. Around the same time as Nitobe was preparing his work, Japanese philosopher Inoue Tetsujiro was writing his own historical revisionism of Bushido. Benesh says that Inoue was motivated by nationalism to, quote, support measures that would protect the Japanese, end quote, and that one of these was, quote, the promotion of a Japanese spirit as an aspect of the nation's unique culture, end quote. As Professor Winston Davis of Washington and Lee University explained, Inoue formulated a model of Bushido as a spiritual and socio-cultural defense for the Japanese way of life, and as a means of instilling nationalism and loyalty into a nation struggling for equality with dangerous Western powers. This was combined with Inoue's outright xenophobia, which Benes says, quote, grew more pronounced over time, end quote. Both Inoue's historical revisionism and his explicit racism were of enormous use to Japan's political leaders, who saw immense value in promoting an ideology of militarization, nationalism and xenophobia in order to turn the entire country into a de facto army united by fanatical loyalty to the emperor and the goal of imperial expansion. Davis wrote, quote, The influence of Inoue Tetsujiro on the cultural life of pre-war Japan can hardly be overestimated, end quote, citing millions of copies of his books being sold and his enormous impact on the Japanese school system. Benesh likewise says, quote, By the end of Meiji, Inoue was by far the most prolific author and editor in the field of Bushido studies. End quote. Bushido's impact on 20th century Japan. <laughs> 
While Japanese leaders seized eagerly on Inoue's newly invented Bushido, actual historical sources were neglected. Benesh writes, quote, Pre-Meiji texts had little influence on the early development of modern Bushido, end quote, noting that they were only cited selectively to support recently established preconceived views. Scharf likewise writes, quote, The fact that the term Bushido itself is rarely attested in pre-modern literature did not discourage Japanese intellectuals and propagandists from using the concept to explicate and celebrate the cultural and spiritual superiority of the Japanese. End quote. The weaponization of Bushido into a motivation for fanatical nationalism, xenophobia, and imperialism would fuel Japan's war with Russia in the early 20th century, as well as its increasingly belligerent conquests of its Asian neighbors culminating in its entry into the Second World War in an attempt to control the entire Pacific. Although this product of the modern Bushido spirit would certainly have pleased Inoue, it would definitely have saddened Nitobi, whose promotion of his own muddled version of Bushido had only peaceful aims. It is perhaps a mercy that Nitobi died before he could foresee the ultimate product of weaponized Bushido, what Browdy describes as, quote, a moral justification for ultra-nationalists intent on Japan's version of American manifest destiny, their divine right to rule Asia. End quote. <laughs>